Welcome everybody. We have with us an, an exciting person to talk to today with lots of great information. And so I would like to introduce Kim Casey, CEO at Luna Startup Labs. But I'm gonna carry on just a little bit further. Beyond that, she is also a global keynote speaker and a TEDx organizer. So we could have lots of interesting insights today. Fantastic, welcome. Thanks, Steve. It's so nice to be here today. All right, so let's get started. Tell me a little bit about you and your business. Let's start with uh, Fantastic question. <laughs> uh, well, I am a serial entrepreneur turned executive coach. I uh, have started several companies throughout my 20 year entrepreneurial journey and discovered after we sold our last company that what I really loved doing was teaching and helping other entrepreneurs yeah. um, go down their journey as well. So I started Luna, Luna Startup Labs to uh, help real empower other entrepreneurs. Fantastic, fantastic. Was there a particular event that inspired that or, or realization that inspired that? Oh, well, so many things shape you throughout your life. But yes. for me, I started my career as an athlete and yep. I went to Duke University on an athletic scholarship and I played women's golf. And after graduating from college, I turned pro and I was very fortunate to be able to play on tours all over the world for five years. Oh, and fantastic. on my journey as an athlete, I had so many amazing coaches to help me. And when I started, after I retired from my career as an athlete, I became an entrepreneur. I had some friends who brought me into a company they were starting and it was so exciting, but it was also very overwhelming and very lonely because I didn't have access to the same kind of support and coaches that I did when I was an athlete. Mm -hmm. And it took a number of years until I went back to business school and got my MBA and really started interacting with more uh, mentors and sponsors during mm -hmm. that time. And I thought, this is great. I really want to do uh, for other entrepreneurs what these folks were doing for me. And that inspired me to create Luna Startup Labs in 2016. Starting with that original entrepreneurial experiment, um, what are two or three things you learn along the way that maybe you didn't expect to learn? Oh, wow. <laughs> Another great question. Um, you know, entrepreneurship is such an incredible journey and opportunity for personal growth and development. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. for me, uh, I think it's really that it's the highs and lows of entrepreneurship, learning how to manage the highs and lows of entrepreneurship and learning how to manage yourself along the way. Yeah. Um, I mentioned earlier that being an entrepreneur can sometimes be a very lonely experience and you don't have anyone to hold you accountable. So you really have to learn how to set goals for yourself and yeah. hold yourself accountable yeah. when there's no office to go to or when there's no team around you, um, especially when you're just starting out. And that's yeah. something I hear all the time from the women who are part of our, my programs is mm -hmm. that they really miss that connection yes. of school or corporate life. Yeah. You know, that's, a, that's an interesting thing. It, it, who holds the coach accountable can be a, an interesting question uh, that, that we can get into from time to time is, is, you know, how does the coach stay focused on the goals? Who, who holds them on, on task? along the way. So this is a very, those are very interesting learnings to get into. Uh, you know, we go all the way through school, whether it's elementary school or, or college and graduate degrees, you still have a program. You still have milestones to hit. You don't necessarily in a business, unless you're very, very, very disciplined. So uh, discipline becomes one of those key pieces. That's fantastic, awesome. So thinking about where you are now, 
who's your best customer today? Who do you serve best? And in your observation, what do they get out from it? What's the result that they experience from it? Sure. So I have two best customers. Um, for my high level mastermind programs, uh, I really think of them as a post accelerator. There's mm -hmm. so many great resources for entrepreneurs in the United States. And we're in Washington, D.C. area. And in the Washington, D.C. area, there's so many incredible opportunities and resources for early stage entrepreneurs. You know, there's tons of accelerators and incubators. And what I recognized a few years ago was that all of these entrepreneurs and startup companies, they go through these accelerator programs they, and they finish the program. Maybe they go through a second one and they get their first round of either friends and family or seed funding. And they suddenly find themselves kind of out there on their own. Mm -hmm. Like there's a point in your entrepreneurial journey where there's no more accelerators for you, or you're just, you don't know where to go next. And so I really found that was kind of my sweet spot for my, for my ideal clients or my yeah. ideal customers. Uh, or a lot of the women who are part of my program was that they, they felt kind of lost and they needed direction and accountability. Mm -hmm. uh, they needed some coaching mm -hmm. and help on planning, um, you know, once you take your company, you get off the ground, you build that website, you get your social media started, maybe you get yep. your first couple customers. So exciting. But then you look around and you go, oh, now what? <laughs> like we've yeah. done all the checklists for starting a startup. Yeah. We need to go to the next level. So our program is really structured to help people get unstuck and mm -hmm. move forward after they kind of hit that brick wall. Mm -hmm. How do you measure your success? going down those paths? Uh, it can be, it can be an interesting journey to measure success. I can, I can tell you for the last 18 months during the pandemic, the way I've measured success was whether or not the companies that I was working with or accelerating were still in business, you Good. know, mm -hmm. companies that started, we launched a special mastermind group um, mm -hmm. during COVID to kind of help these women entrepreneurs uh, pivot during the pandemic, but also just navigate the incredibly uncharted waters. And so I'm happy to say 100% of the women that were part of our program are still in business today. Awesome. And we also look at other metrics like revenue growth and funding. Um, I teach a class every year at DC Startup Week called Show Me the Money. And I do work with a number of entrepreneurs on how okay. to secure funding okay. for their businesses, whether it's crowdfunding or angel investment or venture capital. We work together to create a plan to get them the funding they need to succeed. So I also measure how much funding they've secured over the last year. I think 65% of the women that were in our program were able to secure uh, some type of funding. Fantastic, fantastic. Can you share with us, without divulging anything proprietary uh, or confidential, of course, um, an example of a pivot that worked really, really well for a business? Oh my gosh, there's so many great examples. Um, I'm thinking of one company in particular because they really kind of define my target customer. They, mm -hmm. they came to me, uh, we knew each other for a mm -hmm. number of months and they, they came to me one day and said, Kim, we are really stuck. Like we've just gotten to a place where we can't move forward. We have mm -hmm. prototypes of our product, we have a website, but we just don't know what to do next. There's so mm -hmm. many steps to take. We don't know what the most important mm -hmm. step is. Mm -hmm. And we just don't know how to reach our ideal customers. Yeah. So we spent about three months creating a marketing strategy for them and really a go-to-market strategy. And, and we decided to do a Kickstarter campaign. Mm -hmm. It was during the pandemic and we thought, oh, this will be a great way to get some buzz going, to get some PR, to kind of build our email list and start talking about the brand. And using that crowdfunding campaign as a way to test the product and test the message. And so that's what we did. So we worked together for about nine months. Um, I think they had a goal for their Kickstarter of about $15,000 and they wound up 
uh, exceeding that goal and raised over $35,000, sold several hundred units of their product, um, put their prototypes into production and started going to trade shows and launching their marketing, social media and sales plans. So for me, that was a really successful um, project uh, because they achieved their goals. They got unstuck, they moved forward, they got built their email list to several thousand customers and saw some real traction and momentum. Fantastic. There were a lot of points you just said. There was a really <laughs> interesting one that I think so many people miss. You said it took three months to put a, a, a decent go-to-market plan. How many people understand that putting a real plan together is not a quick a uh, five minute exercise where you pull something out of a notebook someplace and you implement it for their specific situation. Yeah, sometimes that can be a hard sell to mm -hmm. um, a founder or to a, a small mm -hmm. business owner, you know, to explain to them that planning takes time. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of folks will, you know, they usually seek help from someone when they're in um, I find that people start to seek help when they're feeling really anxious or uh -huh. kind of like in a desperate situation. Yeah. Like I've got to do something right now. Yeah. And oftentimes early stage entrepreneurs and small businesses skip over that very important yeah. planning process. Yes. And the process is really, you know, the process is the valuable mm -hmm part of the whole experience. It's not like launching Facebook ads or trying to grow an email list yeah. um, or doing PR. It's really yeah. going through that process to understand your customer and your competition mm -hmm. and your company at a very deep level. Yeah. It's, it's not the plan. It's the process. <laughs> and you've been in business, Steve. I know you've been in corporate America and the business world for a long time. So you've probably seen that over and over again. Yes. Yeah. I think yes. that's really where real innovation begins to happen is when you invest the time to look at your competition, to yes. look at your really audit and analyze your business and you start to see where the gaps are. Yeah. And if you're just out there every day throwing spaghetti against the wall, you know, you're going to waste a lot of money on spaghetti. <laughs> 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 Nothing's going to stick. Yeah. That's the piece that so many people, you know, so many people think the plan is the magic. The plan's not the magic. It was sitting down and thinking through what are the variables, what can go wrong, what can go right. If this goes wrong, what should I do? and starting to get all of the different options on the table. So you, you, you already have yourself somewhat prepared when something goes different from the way you expect it. And it's always going to go different. We're always going to find out new stuff, something we overlooked. But if you've got that menu of things that you thought about, you're so much further ahead. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, for so many small business owners or, or start, startup founders, you know, time and money are almost priceless, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if you if you're one of the lucky few companies, I think like less than 1% of all companies, I might have that statistic wrong. It's somewhere I think like less than 1% of all companies raise venture capital. So mm -hmm. unless you have venture capital, and you have like endless amounts of money, and money does buy time sometimes, mm -hmm. yeah. like, spend experimenting and like trying different things to figure out what works you know as a small business owner you really have to use your time and your money wisely mm -hmm. and that's why investing in that planning process is so important because it really it really saves you time in the long run because you're not just again throwing spaghetti against the wall you're not just like trying to figure out how to put a square peg into a round hole yeah, yeah. and I hope it works fantastic fantastic I'm going to take you back to your COVID remark. What are what have you learned about your business over the last year and a half, two years? Well, like a lot of people, I've learned a lot about myself. I mean, I think COVID was just such a you know, a, a whiplash kind of an event where one day the whole world was fine and everyone was mm -hmm. happy. And the next day we were all isolated and detached. 
um, it definitely has forced me to rethink kind of my business and mm -hmm. my brand. It was a good time for some self-reflection. Mm -hmm. um, I am amazed during COVID at how quickly people adopted different technologies mm -hmm. like Zoom or like TikTok. And an you know, it just seems yeah. like the pandemic really accelerated <clears throat> our adoption of these technologies. And what might have taken several years to kind of tip, you know, if you've ever read like, I think Malcolm Gladwell's tipping point, you know, there's yeah. this where companies and technologies tip mm -hmm. and it just accelerated that tipping point so much mm -hmm. so that these things became almost ubiquitous in our lives. Um, but that really affects how small businesses, including me uh, and my company, how we do marketing and how we connect with customers in the future. Mm -hmm. So I've had to like learn a lot of new tricks <laughs> about, especially when it comes to like video production, we're doing a whole bunch of work with TikTok and Instagram reels right now. Um, so I'm having to push myself out of my comfort zone a lot, um, for early 2020 launch with some new marketing materials. Yeah. And, um, it's really interesting to, when you hit a comfort and as a coach, Steve, I know you know this, but like I'm hitting a wall right now in terms of like my comfort zone mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur and as a business owner, because I realize that the secret to my future success is going to be in some of these new marketing tools and marketing channels. And I'm a little bit afraid to put myself out there mm. and you know, like shoot a hundred TikTok videos and put them out for everyone to consume. Yeah. But I know that I have to. So I'm working through that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that gets me back to the question, who holds the coach accountable? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This, this stuff all seems to come back to the same thing. Who, who, who holds me, whoever me is, accountable? That's yeah. It's, yeah. And, and, and so that I keep moving forward. I can't move. I can't grow if I stay in my comfort zone. So how do I grow? It's so true. Yeah. 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 So much. This is, you know, as COVID is in a way as horrible as it's been for some people has also been a blessing. It, it has brought a, it's forced us to open up our minds to new ideas new ways of trying things, new ways of interacting with people. It's, there's so many, so many new, so many people trying new things that, I, I mean, we went out to dinner the other night, but we didn't go out. We ordered out and went and got it, had a wonderful dinner at home that somebody else prepared. It was fantastic. And we didn't have to put up with the noise and the, 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 the other uh, attributes of a crowd. It was very interesting. I would never have done that two years ago. Yeah, it's definitely changed the way we socialize. It is. It is. Yeah, it's and different. it's changed. I think also another point for everyone who's watching to think about is that it's changed who we socialize with. Like, mm. I think you really need to reflect on who your pandemic posse was mm -hmm. uh, and the people that were your allies and advocates during the pandemic boy those are those are some good people i mean those are people that you like really um shared a unique experience with so yeah. Yeah. i think of the friends and colleagues that i connected with the most during the pandemic or the mm -hmm. most often and i'll always kind of remember and treasure those people for mm -hmm. really being there they were there when you needed them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to pick on an interesting question here. This might be a little bit different. It's said that smart people learn from their mistakes. Wise people learn from the mistakes from others. So to allow us to learn a little bit from yours, what are one or two mistakes you found yourself making along the way that you would do differently today? Ah, <laughs> you put me on the hot seat here. Uh, <laughs> you know, I always like to say that as both an athlete and an entrepreneur, I have been able to experience the thrill of victory as well as the as the agony of defeat. Mm -hmm. And I love winning as much as the next person, but it's when you're losing or when you're really struggling that you grow. 
-hmm. and that you force yourself out of your comfort zone and you push yourself to Mm -hmm. do new things. Um, And I think I'm probably guilty of some of the same entrepreneurial mistakes that some of the founders that I work with make. And one of them is, I think whenever I've whenever I found myself drifting in life or in my career, Mm -hmm. I look at those times and I realize I didn't have like clear goals. Mm -hmm. So I've always been super goal-driven person and setting high goals and then finding a way to exceed them. Um, And there's sometimes in life where I think as an entrepreneur, you do feel very overwhelmed and, and it's very scary how many moving parts there can be in a startup or in a small business. And you just lose sight of your goals. And then you start just kind of spinning like a top and it's a vicious cycle. And so that's probably been like one of the mistakes that whenever I find myself feeling a little bit lost or drifting, I realize that I don't have a clear goal. I don't have like a timeline or an action plan. And then I kind of just, like I said, I spin a little bit. And the first thing that I usually do is set some goals and I write down like my next three or four steps and I start taking action. And, um, you know, I I know that you're a big fan of taking action as well, but I think that is the best way to really like get yourself moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. And I think about it, how many business owners have you run into that are scared of setting goals? Yeah, because you don't want to miss your goals. I mean, you don't want to fail, right? Like when you're creating a company out of nothing, you know, you're creating a company out of like thin air and there's no precedent. There's no like, you can't look at last year, what they did and try to improve on that. Like it's, you're just doing everything for the first time and and you don't know what to expect. So it feels very frightening. And um, I don't, I wish more people talked about that because I know I can't be the only one as an entrepreneur that sometimes feels frightened by the enormity of like what you're trying to do yeah. or by just the kind of uncertainty of what's going on around you. Yeah, It's kind of how the name came from Luna Startup Labs. We use the name Luna because uh, Luna stands for the moon and it's like a light in the darkness. So I really felt like I wanted to create a company um, and a program that could light the way for entrepreneurs who were kind of lost in that darkness. And we start every session with goal setting and then figuring out what like your next three steps are going to be. So Fantastic. I, I like that. I like that analogy. That's a very good, very, very good analogy. Um, you know, I think about some of the businesses I've worked with who just absolutely struggled with the concept of holding themselves responsible and accountable to a goal without ever realizing that it wasn't about the goal. It was about giving them a direction to go in to achieve a result. And yes, they could say, I need this by this date. And that's fantastic. But there's obstacles we haven't found. What if that holds us up? Did we use that goal to get ourselves at least closer to where we are trying to get to so that we can then reset, recalibrate the goal a little bit further out and keep drawing ourselves towards where it was we were trying to get to in the first place. I think about some of the clients I've had that had that, it took them two years to get that full revelation that it wasn't the number, it was the progress away from where we are towards the result. And once they got that, that it was just, it was fantastic. The results they were able to get after that, they stopped being intimidated by setting a goal and more excited by setting a goal and see what we can do to make it happen. I love that. And if I could add two points there, I'm, I'm thinking of a company I spoke with earlier this week. I have two different points to make just to, to build on what you were saying. First, I find that some entrepreneurs who really have trouble achieving their goals I see a lot of folks that set goals that are just so unrealistic. You know, Mm -hmm. when you follow that smart goal setting framework, you Mm -hmm. need to make sure that your goal is specific, it's measurable, it's ambitious yet realistic, and it's time bound. And I find that when you set a goal that is so hard to achieve, that is so far out there, that's when you can really get like 
paralysis by analysis, yeah. trying to figure out how you're going to achieve it. So for me, I know that I, as an entrepreneur, I've gone through, I mentioned the agony of defeat. I've mm -hmm. definitely gone through some experiences with different startups where things didn't work out the way I wanted them to, where it just was the wrong product or the wrong market. And when you go through those times, it really rattles your confidence a mm -hmm. little bit. And I found that when I went back to goal setting and set just really small goals, yes, 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 yes I yes. was able to like rebuild my confidence very quickly. And um, it probably took, you know, a year to kind of go through that exercise. But for me, it was so valuable. I just, I learned that I needed to start setting small goals that I could really achieve and then kind of, you know, give myself a high five for yeah. achieving the small goals. And then it was a stepping stone to achieving bigger and bolder goals. <clears throat> um, so sometimes I think it's like not just inaction, but it's also maybe you're doubting yourself or mm -hmm. lack of confidence. So making sure you have some small goals that you can achieve and forcing yourself not just to be accountable, but to celebrate the small successes and see that you're making, like you said, see that you're making progress because so when the goal is so big, when you're trying to build a billion dollar company, you forget to sell celebrate the fact that you hit a million dollars for yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, or when you've got investors breathing down your neck or you know and they're wanting you to get to 100 million or 50 million like you forget that getting to three or four million is really a massive accomplishment well it is a massive accomplishment if you've never been there before right. i mean and, and, and then you hit it is getting getting yourself used to sell celebrating the little wins so that you don't constantly beat yourself up on the little setbacks. Right. If you only acknowledge the setbacks, you forget that there are wins all the time. Just getting to the, just getting that phone call in, just getting that person to call you back, just those can be worth celebrating depending on what you're dealing with. Yeah, just the, if, if we don't celebrate, then all we, all we feel is the punishment and what a quick way to get burned out. Uh, burnout, yes, that is such a big thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's, I think just that's a great thing, like set small goals and remember just to check in on your goals very often. And when you hit them, like just take that moment to go, Hey, I did that. I yeah, did this. Yeah, I yeah. did it. I set this goal and I did it and I'm going to do it for the next one and the next one. Yeah. And it's that incremental progress that really, I think helps companies grow quickly. Yeah. Um, fantastic. Fantastic. All right. I'm going to get to the second last question here. Um, got your contact information. Are there anything else you would like me to make sure we communicate an offer perhaps or anything in addition to that oh my goodness <laughs> such a good question i should probably come up with it we're testing out some new products right now um I'm testing out some new products and, you know, most of my business really focuses on marketing strategy. It's what I love the most, mm -hmm. um, helping entrepreneurs. I kind of joke around, I started joking around saying what I do best is I help entrepreneurs get found, get funded and get famous. Mm -hmm. And no matter how much I tweak my elevator pitch, when I tell people I can make you famous or I can make you rich and famous, people pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, really what I do is kind of similar to the example I gave you earlier in the broadcast where I was talking about my client that decided to do a Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. I'm really good at going in uh, for a couple hours and getting a handle on the business, doing an audit, um, especially as it relates to your marketing and sales strategies. Uh, whether it's SEO, content creation, or just general marketing strategy. You know, so many entrepreneurs that I see, like some of the biggest mistakes young entrepreneurs make these days is they think Facebook or Instagram is the marketing strategy. Mm -hmm. And they're just running thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of ads. And they don't consider like all of the big marketing universe out there. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they need to kind of 
create a 360 degree strategy that covers different channels and methods of marketing. Mm -hmm. So I guess like I, that's what I would probably say my offer is if you want to tweak your marketing strategy for 2022, come December and January, give me a call and I can do like a three hour package. Very good. Awesome. All right. Last question. What is most inspiring to you today? I think the thing that's most inspiring to me today, and it's taken me a little while to understand this about just life, is that as a mentor, um, kind of a educator, I don't I'm not my best when I do things for other people. I've worked in marketing agencies in the past and you know it's where the clients come to you and they want you to do everything for them. But where I found my zone of genius is or my sweet spot is I really enjoy empowering others to mm -hmm. do it for themselves. So that's why I usually work with earlier stage entrepreneurs, companies that are under $10 million in revenue, mm -hmm everywhere from, you know, startup to kind of that like initial big growth phase where they're just spreading across the United States or going international for the first time. And they're trying to get to that $10 million sweet spot. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really good at helping them build their team and mm -hmm. create that marketing strategy, almost like a fractional CMO. Yeah. And, um, you know, I kind of come in and just do a surgical strike, if you will, like mm -hmm. in helping them get organized. And then I love seeing people take it from there and I love seeing the tips and tools that I teach them inspire Great. innovation in their team and in their company and then watch them grow. So fantastic. Okay, this has been Kim Casey of Luna Startup Labs. And if you've heard anything that sounds interesting, please check the information we've got with her contact information and give her a call. She'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for having me today. And it's been a pleasure talking to you, Steve. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Kim.